I'll just take this moment now to um, explain to you a little bit about you know, how we work at a holistic energetic level with kinesiology. So I'm going to do a diagram on the board <coughs> and it's going to show you um, a little bit of the more esoteric and advanced theory behind how kinesiology works. So um, there's two orders. There's a spiritual order and there's a physical order. And quite a few um, theoretical physicists and modern physicists actually deal with the concept of these two orders. So there was a physicist called David Bohm um, who developed a holographic model of looking at the universe. Uh, and there's another one who's still around today called Tiller who also uses a similar approach. And, what, and so with these two orders, um, you know, Tiller calls one negative space-time, which is the spiritual, um, and the physical he calls positive space-time. And these, these levels have different properties. So one of the things that happens in positive space-time is we have this, this law called entropy. So entropy means that everything eventually goes into a mess or disorder. So if I don't clean my house, it gets messy. So I need to put energy into my house in order for it to stay ordered. So everything in this universe seems to just kind of break down, disintegrate and fall apart and spread itself everywhere over time. And that propensity for that to happen is called entropy. Um, what Tiller proposed is that in negative space-time, there's negative entropy. So in the spirit realm, everything organises, everything becomes more ordered, everything becomes more uh, structured and refined. <coughs> so that's a natural tendency in negative space-time, and we have the opposite tendency in positive space-time. So if we have a, a person... This person has a physical element, but also has a spiritual element. So that could be the soul or the spirit or something. And the reason this person just doesn't die and decompose, which is entropy, is because there's a spiritual component that's connected to them. So when that spiritual component is plugged in to here, then this creates the organization for life to proceed. When this disconnects then, and this floats off, then this basically dies and decomposes. So the miracle of the body is enabled through the organizational capacity of the spirit or negative space-time. And so when we're fully plugged in, we're basically happy and have a sense of positive control in our life. So things are going our way and we feel innately good. <clears throat> when this disconnects, so when part of that breaks away, then what that means is part of the nervous system becomes autonomous. It's no longer directed by the spirit. So our sense of knowing, our sense of confidence, our sense of certainty falls away. So then part of our brain that corresponds to that disconnection starts to become more active to try and orientate us. So it starts spinning around and gyrating around to try and make sense of our reality because that connection's broken, which would otherwise automatically make us have sense of our reality. And so when this occurs, then we're basically analyzing, so we're in analysis, all the time, we're evaluating and judging ourselves and everything around us as a way to try and orientate ourselves with that disconnection in place. So when we have this disconnection, we also operate holographically. So what that means is disconnections occur at all levels through our being, not just mentally, but we're going to get physiological imbalances. We're going to get structural imbalances. We're going to get imbalances in ourselves. So all of that will be a reflection of this primary disconnection with spirit, with negative space-time. We've lost the ability 
for the mind to organise itself. We've lost the ability for the physiology to organise itself. We've lost the ability for our cells to organise themselves. We've, we've lost the ability for the structure to organise ourselves. And if we had the view of our energetic realms, like the multidimensional view like we were looking at before, where we saw the field and the chakras and the meridians, there would also be disturbances through the energetics of the being. So the chakras and the auric fields would have disturbances as well. So it's across the whole spectrum, the physical spectrum and the energetic spectrum, the neurological spectrum, the cellular spectrum, the genetic spectrum. Everything will have some sort of imbalance or inclusion when we disconnect. Now the problem isn't that we disconnect because that's part of the cycle of life. The problem is that we don't reconnect. So if we don't re-establish connection, because that's where our learning comes from, from disconnecting and then reconnecting, disconnecting and reconnecting, that process of disconnecting and reconnecting provides the evolutionary drive of our spiritual growth, of our <clears throat> evolution of consciousness. So if we, if we stay disconnected, then th this becomes more severe over time, this becomes more severe over time. So we start to develop disease and imbalance in our body. So when we do the muscle monitoring and kinesiology, what we're doing is we're identifying all the different areas where the stress is manifesting. <clears throat> and so this is how the subconscious understands our problems from the disconnection point of the different areas of our body. So it will identify all of these. And once these are all identified, then we can ask the body, what support do you need to create the reconnection? What support do you need for the healing? And so the body will say, I want this or, want, or I want that. And it will be very specific. And we will supply that. And then that will then enable that reconnection. And once that reconnects, the body has the blueprint to reorganize itself. It has the blueprint to then start to self-organize. And so the nervous system knows what to do. The physiology knows what to do. The structure knows what to do. The cells know what to do. Everything knows what to do now, so it just heals itself because the blueprint's there. If you don't have the blueprint, the body flounders and we start to flounder to try and orientate and approximate what we're supposed to do, but we don't have the roadmap anymore. So another interesting aspect of this is we also disconnect um, psychologically. So we've, this, is our, this is our immortal self, this is our temporary self. The temporary self has lost connection with the immortal self. So what the temporary self does is it attaches to things outside of itself in order to create an identity. So this is our true identity, but it's disconnected. So we attach to other identities. <clears throat> so one of the identities we attach to could be beliefs. Another identity we could attach to could be uh, addiction. So we could have substances that we're attracted to that create chemical changes in our brain that make us feel like we're connected. But it's only temporary because it's a chemical. Uh, and it could also be codependency. So we could be codependent with another person, uh, with our occupation, um, with all sorts of different things. So we kind of associate ourselves as this thing or that thing because it's what we do or what we did or something. And we make that us. When it's not, it's just something we've done. So these external identities are held in place because of our fear of the disconnection. So that disconnection represents the void state. So we, because we don't have an inner identity, we create an external identity. And even though we may recognize some of these things as being destructive, we hold them in place because even though we dislike them, we fear the void more. And so kinesiology creates the internal support to re-establish that reconnection so the transition through the void isn't as intense. So this is a more advanced esoteric explanation of how kinesiology uh, helps us to regain ourselves, resolve stress, and evolve in a modern world.